if you're a teacher and you're uh, inventing a course for the first time or revising it a lot, you know, you sit down with your teaching partners and you sort of put on the table all of the ideas. Um, you know, teaching, you know, you've got uh, an ever-expanding universe of knowledge out there and you have to cherry-pick the things that are going to be important. It has to hang together. One of the strategies Joanne and I thought when we went into the current iteration of teaching 507 Biological Chemistry was to abandon completely um, higher eukaryotes, namely us, because genome sequencing projects had sequenced so many bacteria that um, one could create an entire course in biochemistry that would be very meaningful just focusing on microorganisms. We uh, spent a couple of days reading and thinking about it. That would be the course Joanne and I would teach if it weren't for the fact that we actually have feel as though we have a commitment to students that are going to go on to medical school and therefore if we avoided mammalian biochemistry, students wouldn't know anything about the mitochondrion and, you know, organelles and things like that that are associated with eukaryotes. And we wouldn't be able to make these, these uh, connections to disease, the physiological scenarios. Nevertheless, it, why, why were we so interested in bacteria? And what, what would be an interesting story that I might be able to tell you if we had taken that path? So we, we have a fellow in biological engineering named Eric Ahm. And he uh, is an informaticist and an engineer, and an extremely good chemist. Okay, he really knows his pathways. When he looks at a, a cell, he thinks about what it is, but also where it came from in terms of how it evolved from precursors, where its family tree, so to speak. One of the most interesting organisms that he's published on not too long ago is an organism called Desulfurutus. And this would be a wonderful biochemistry course in itself. He um, wondered if he went out and dug up a cubic meter of dirt and outside MIT, and if he did 16S RNA sequencing, how many living things would be there? Maybe many thousands, maybe 10,000. Then what he asked the question, what if you went down 100 meters? You know, maybe you see 1,000. But what if you go down till there's really only one thing there? And that's what he did, going down two miles into the ground. And there was a single species ecosystem called D. sulfurutus. And I remember seeing this paper and I brought it over to Joanne. I was so excited because the last picture showed its metabolic network, its metabolic pathways. It had everything. <laughs> and it makes sense. It can't rely on other things. For example, we can't make all of our amino acids. We got to get them from food that we eat or in our cofactors, some of our vitamins are made by the bacteria in our gut. Um, so if all the bacteria disappeared, we would too. Um, so we rely on other things, but Desulfurutus doesn't rely on anything. So when you look at its, its biochemical networks, what you see is that it can fix nitrogen. It can take N2 and convert it to NH3 and then put that into amino acids, and it can make all of its amino acids. It has a really good pentose phosphate pathway. It actually uses radiation in a strange way to generate some of the energy that it, it needs. It uses it to generate carbon monoxide. Ultimately, that CO is going to form an acetyl group that will be able to generate all of the organic material inside the desulfurutus. It's got all kinds of electron transport pathways. So it's developed enormous versatility by being a single species ecosystem. So again, you know, this was a course where we, 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 we had to make a compromise because of our clientele. Teachers have to think about that. We have to, you know, teach to what the people need in order to go on to the next step. But as sort of a closing thought, you know, I think that it would be wonderful for 
next generation biochemists to really turn their attention to the microbial world, to teach this vast biochemistry and understand how, how bacteria effortlessly swap biochemical pathways, pick up entire biochemical pathways without even breaking a sweat. Whenever they, they find themselves stressed, they just pick up a new pathway and they survive.